Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are starting to see some cheap budget PCs again, and I've got one here on the desk that came in the other day from Ace Magic. This is the company also known as Ace Magician that made a bunch of mini PCs that we've looked at recently that were actually pretty nice. And this laptop isn't bad with a few caveats. And we're going to dive into what this inexpensive laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Ace Magic. However, they are not sponsoring this video, nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this cheap laptop is all about. Now, the price point for this at the moment comes in at $310. They are always messing around with coupon codes on their product pages, so be sure to click everything to get the best price, and I would expect this to go on sale quite frequently, so just be on the lookout for that. All in hardware-wise, I think it's pretty nice for what they're charging. It has a 1080p 15.6 inch display. This is an IPS display, so it's got really nice viewing angles. I was surprised by how good the display looks, even though it's not all that bright. So I put the brightness on this at about 250 nits. They don't have the specifications on their website at all, but that's what it looks like to me. It's actually a nice display and more than what I was expecting. Inside, it has an Intel N95 processor. This is a lower end Intel chip that is great for doing the basics inside of Windows like movie watching and web browsing and word processing. It's not so great for gaming and higher end video editing, but I think for what a lot of people might be buying an inexpensive laptop for, it is more than adequate. It also has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM on board and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, an NVMe SSD no less, and you can swap out the RAM, the hard drive, and the Wi-Fi card, so you have a little bit of upgradability in here as well. These N95 processors don't rely on dual channel memory the same way that the older Intel chips did, so there's no performance hit here for having a single socket of RAM. And I also want you to note, which we'll talk about later, the robust cooling mechanism on this low-end processor. So it's designed, I think, quite well, but there are a couple of little issues that I've been experiencing with it. The biggest one that I've had to deal with is the Wi-Fi. It has an AC Wi-Fi radio on board, not Wi-Fi 6. And it's a one-by-one one radio, which means it doesn't go all that fast as far as data transfers are concerned. And it did not like my Unify Wi-Fi hardware here at all. But I did connect it to another Wi-Fi access point. And it was okay, but the uh, data rates I'm getting out of it barely get over 200 megabits per second if I'm right next to the access point. So the Wi-Fi on board is its weak point, and you might have some trouble with it. Um, and if you do, you can always swap out the Wi-Fi and swap in something a little more robust. But that was the big thing that I noticed here out of the gate. And you know what else is bad on this is the webcam. This is the best I could get out of it. It is completely washed out, very low quality here. So you're not going to look all that great on your Zoom calls with this, unfortunately. So you might want to consider an external webcam if your looks are important to you. But those are really the only big gripes with this. Beyond that, uh, it has been a pretty nice experience playing around with this laptop. Let's take a look at the keyboard and trackpad. It's actually got a number pad on here. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't have your plus and minus and enter keys here on the right-hand side. They kept the number pad kind of a full-size keypad here, but it does have one. The keys are pretty nice. They're well-spaced. It actually isn't bad to type on it. You've got good travel. They are a little springier than I would like, and there is a bit of flex here to the overall case, and that's something we see even on some name brand computers that come in at these low price points. Unfortunately, though, the keyboard is not backlit. The trackpad isn't bad. There are actually two buttons underneath this, even though it looks like a single one. So if you click in the middle, you can sometimes accidentally right-click, even if you're only pushing with one finger. So you're going to want to keep your left clicks over here and your right clicks over here because there actually is two buttons under here, even though it doesn't look like it. There are some stickers on here that look like they're easy to remove, but they're not. Um, they do have customer support now, but you have to do it through WhatsApp. So you have to download WhatsApp and scan their card there. I did uh, send them a WhatsApp text message and they did respond to it. So that was a good thing. So there is some support here, unlike some of these other no-name brands that we look at. As for ports on this, you have your power input here. It is a USB Type-C power plug. This is, though, only for power here. So this doesn't do data or video output. 
This one is a USB 3 port. You've got a full-size HDMI output. You've got another USB-C here, but this is only for data devices. It does not do video output, nor does this do power. So it's just a USB port with a USB-C connector on it. Right here, you've got a micro SD card slot, so you could add some more storage to the mix. This is a USB 2 port, so I would use your keyboard or mouse or something here that doesn't need a lot of bandwidth. You got another USB 3 port here and a headset uh, adapter, three and a half inch millimeter, a uh, little plug there for headphones and headsets. So pretty well equipped here, as you can see. The speakers aren't bad on it. They are tinny, as you might expect, but they are stereo speakers. So you've got uh, decent speakers, I guess, for doing voice calls and that sort of thing. But you probably want to connect up headphones either via Bluetooth or directly connected to that headphone jack for the best audio quality. Now the weight on this comes in at 1.7 kilograms or 3.67 pounds. Not terribly lightweight, but also not all that heavy for its size. It does have some metal on board here on the top of the lid, but the rest of it feels like what you would expect out of a low cost laptop, mostly plastic. But it's pretty close to what you might get with a lower end Acer. So it doesn't feel all that cheap comparatively to other name brand machines on the market. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. Now this is running Windows 11 Pro and it's fully activated and there's no bloatware on here. You'd basically get a basic Windows installation ready to go when you first boot it up. Let's take a look at its web browsing performance. I am on its one by one AC Wi-Fi here and I am connecting through a different access point than I usually do just because it doesn't like my Unify hardware that I use in the studio here. But it's okay for web browsing. When I ran some benchmarks on the Wi-Fi, I was only seeing about 200 megabits per second max on the downstream, as I mentioned. So you're not gonna notice it all that much when you're browsing the web. But if you are downloading large files and you've got a gigabit connection, it's actually gonna be slower than some of your other Wi-Fi devices might be on your network. So you might wanna consider a ethernet adapter to plug in when you're at your desk or swapping out that Wi-Fi card inside, but web browsing is not bad here at all. Now these little Intel chips do very well with video playback, and right now I've got my YouTube channel playing a 1080p 60 frames per second video. I had a couple of drop frames when it first started, but after that it is smooth sailing here and it is keeping up just fine. So this will do really well with YouTube and Twitch and all the other streaming providers like Netflix out there, so very good for a cheap media playback device. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 156, which puts it in a good place versus other lower end laptops that you might encounter out there. And as expected, it does very well with Microsoft Office applications, including Word and Excel. So if you are doing mostly basic computing tasks here, I think this little laptop is going to do quite well for you. Let's take a look though at some games that we ran on it, which of course is a very different experience. So we'll begin with the good news, which is that older games do exceptionally well. This is Half-Life 2 running at 1080p, and it was generally doing about 60 frames per second here. So if you have a bunch of older classic games in your library from your Steam account, uh, this is going to run a lot of those games without issue. But it's when you get into the more modern stuff like no Man's Sky here, that it's a very different experience. So this one we ran at 640 by 480, and we were barely able to get about 25 frames per second out of it, even at the lowest settings. Now I was surprised by how well this does at emulation. Right now I've got the PC SX2 emulator loaded up. This is of course a PlayStation 2 emulator. We're playing Burnout Revenge, one of my favorite games, and we're getting a solid 60 frames per second on this almost all of the time. Every once in a while, there's a small lag hit, but for the most part, this is running at full speed, even on this very low-end Intel processor. So really good performance here. I think this is probably the max you're gonna get from an emulation standpoint. So you could do this, the Dreamcast, some of the lower end GameCube games, and of course, all of the consoles from the 70s and 80s and most of the 90s will also perform well on here. So these little Intel chips pack some power, just not for modern games, but there's a lot you can certainly do with it. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 346. And although this score looks close to what we saw out of a couple of low end Ryzen based laptops from a couple of years ago, 
graphically it's still pretty far behind which is why you can get away with running some AAA games on low-end Ryzen's and why you can't get them running here on the Ace Magic with the N95, but still plenty of power in here for doing emulation and of course all of the basic tasks. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 99.8%, a very good score. You can also see how cool it was running even under heavy sustained load. So that means you're not going to see any performance drop off, even if you are putting this under load for an extended period of time. And I think that has to do with the rather large cooling system this has. Pretty much overkill, I think, for this little Intel chip. But it does an exceptional job keeping that chip cool. And the best news is, is that the fan is really quiet, even when you're pushing it. So it doesn't make all that much noise while it's keeping everything cool. So as bad as the Wi-Fi is here, the cooling system is top notch. Now, game streaming is not as bad as I thought it was going to be, given some of the Wi-Fi issues I mentioned. This is the Xbox Cloud Gaming service as part of your Game Pass Ultimate subscription. And it's running just fine here. I'm not seeing any stuttering or drop frames. It's pretty smooth. So altogether, from a game streaming perspective, at least on the Xbox side, it should be okay. Where it might struggle is with some of the higher bandwidth services like GeForce Now. So you might see yourself having to adjust some of the bandwidth if it's not able to keep up. But I think for most 1080p gaming, you should be okay with the onboard Wi-Fi as is. Now, the battery life on this was a little better than expected. I would say around six to seven hours, give or take, depending on what you're doing. I was doing some basic tasks like web browsing and Microsoft Word, and I was keeping the brightness down on the display. So you might be able to stretch it out over the course of a workday if you really dial things back a bit. But I think for most people, six to seven hours is probably what you can expect out of this, maybe a little bit less, and certainly a lot less if you are gaming on the device. One last thing to take a look at, though, and that is its Linux performance. And it was able to boot up the most recent version of Ubuntu. It looks great. It performs fine. But the audio doesn't work. So I was not able to get any sound out of its speakers. But everything else did uh, get detected properly here. So you will need to find some other means of getting audio working. This does, I believe, have a Realtek audio chip on board. But for whatever reason, Ubuntu just didn't recognize it. So you, again, you'll have to work a little bit harder to get sound out of it in Linux, but Linux does seem to run on it. And hopefully if the audio issues get worked out, it might be a fun laptop to experiment with alternative operating systems. So all in, there are some shortfalls here, some caveats, the webcam and the Wi-Fi being the biggest ones. But I was pleased actually for kind of a no-name brand, how nice this one feels and certainly how nice it performs. The display is really nice on it better than I expected, and the build quality is on par with some of the lower cost Acers that we have looked at in the past. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.